it's Sarah and I'm going to do a little tag today for hashtag think pink art this is my mom and my aunt Elna that's her sister and they were on a cruise looking so sexy <laughs> they've both now passed away from cancer and um, October being breast cancer awareness month I just wanted to share that um, I hate cancer cancer sucks so uh, I'm just going to keep that on my desk as inspiration and we're gonna make a tag so I felt like playing with my paints I have out a few pinks lots of pinks I'm gonna just kinda I have an idea that I'm thinking about I'm gonna do a mixed media background and I think we're just gonna put a little angel on here and yeah, we'll see where it goes so I was gonna do an ATC but I think a tag will be the perfect amount of space I have a credit card this is actually a, a, a gift card any type of card because I'm gonna use this deli paper and I'm gonna just cover it with paint so it'll be kinda like something like that and then I'm gonna adhere it to the tag actually I wonder no, no, no. I want to do it this way. This is a technique that I haven't done very often, so that's why I want to do it again. I haven't done it. Um, I th I'm think. Oh, excuse me. I'm thinking I'm going to do metallics. So I have. This is the Craft Smart paint, rose. And then this one is pink blush pearl. So these are either metallics or pearls. This is a metallic. They're calling it metallic. And I'm just adding a couple of drops of paint. Then I'm going to throw in some regular fuchsia. Like this is just Americana Royal Fuchsia. Ooh, that's a lot. And white. Just a little bit of white acrylic paint. All right, and we'll see how it goes. So I'm just going to take my card and I'm just going to pull it along smudge it around it's looking kind of um, stripey and I think I over blended it now so I'm gonna leave that I like it it's definitely a pink background so I'm gonna leave that to dry I have my fan on like you can see the back has the original color that I swiped but then I, I think I over blended it so I'm going to do it again just because I want to get a couple of variations and let me see maybe I should have done it on the more matte side I'm going to use so let's go I love metallics I love anything shimmery and sparkly I love it now this is um bubblegum pink and this is not a um, metallic so I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to do white so this has only three colors compared to all those other colors I just did and I haven't wiped off my um, and this time I'm just going to go like sideways But I think I, I am over blending it. I'm not sure. It's definitely pink. I didn't get as much dark pink, but I'm going to let that dry. And um, we're going to do some background um, stamping. I have a lot of, this is what uh, Cat Hand would do. I have all this paint left on my scraper thing. So you got to take another piece and you got to use it up um i also just ordered a book by uh, her name is bowser hold on i'm gonna have to edit this out now um but anyway on uh stamp carving her name will totally come to me in a minute um because when i i just took a class um by Kate Crane. She's an English um, mixed media artist and um, it was called Journal Soup and those of you who watch my videos know 
um, but she did some stamp carving and it was so fun I happened to see thanks to Patty Tolley Parish um, there was a, a podcast on last night and I was listening to that but as I was looking at her um, blog page she had this section on stamp carving so I clicked on it and um, she had she has a book a whole book she did a, a whole class at her apartment in New York City anyway I'm going to use this uh, breast cancer awareness stamp that I made and I carved this out of um, this is called Speedy Carve or no wait a minute yeah, Speedy Car, we got it right. And it's by Speedball. They sell this at Michael's and AC Moore. AC Moore only had the smaller one. Michael's had, this is like a bigger size. Um, this is actually 6x12. And I think it comes in like a 4x6 or something size too. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to be using that. Um, and I will do more on that when I get the book. I ordered the book on Amazon last night. I also ordered... Um, a lettering book. What is her name? Faye, Fa Faye Fan Bowser. Uh, Julie Faye Fan Bowser. Okay, ba Bowser. I can't pronounce her last name. All right. Anywho, I also ordered a lettering book. Um, so I'm going to share those when I get them. Um, got, I have my hearts out here too. And this is one of my faves. Uh, this is just a breast cancer awareness stamp. It's by Inka Dinka Do. Um, it doesn't have a name. But it just has all these very supportive words on it. Um, so I'm going to be using that for my background. And I just have, I love circles. And I'm going to use like, you know how I always do my circles with um, found objects. I'm going to use a pen cap. Um, and I have a heart out here too. But we'll see. We'll see where it goes. And then I'm going to draw a little angel that's going to go on here too. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Uh... I'm going to go away and come back when all this is dried. I'm going to dry this paper and I'm going to adhere it to my uh, tag with, I think I'm going to use my Podge. Matte Medium. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use my Liquitex Matte Medium in the fluid. I'm going to use this to adhere. I might do two. I think I might do one with each paper and we'll see how it goes. This has got uh, like a real kind of, I like this one. This one's kind of turning out cool. And this one's a much lighter pink, so I'll be, I have also pulled different color inks, which I don't have very many. This um, pink peony is so light, it may not even show up. It may show up better on the darker one. Then I have stays on blazing red and stays on fuchsia. So I'm going to use those to do some stamping. And then I, I might just do stamping with um, paint as well. So we'll see. But yeah, I have two very different backgrounds here. Just in pink. And I love pink. So uh, I'll be right back and we'll do that part. All right. I am adhering these. I figured I'd just show you because I am not an expert at this by any means. I have not done a lot of tags lately. I've dabbled in all types of mixed media but look how that's giving wrinkles now and stuff too so that's pretty cool I just have my my gel medium on a paper plate here and I'm gonna just adhere or um, cover this tag and this is just those plain manila tags that you get I think Ranger or something like that makes them move it over here a little and I'm trying to fit a couple so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do two with this one Yep, uh, no, there's a little extra. I'm going to just go right here. And I'm just going to go like that. I'm going to get a butt wipe. I call them butt wipes. And just wipe my surface. This is a, a craft mat, and it's seen better days, but um, they're awesome. So those of you who are new to crafting, I'm just kind of thinking that this is um, all my usual subbies but it may be a lot of new subscribers if it's because it's, if you're just following the hashtag you may be seeing a lot of things that you've not seen before so I'm going to try and show a little more um, real time um, so all I've done so far is just put paint on this with a credit card and now I've adhered it I'm going to go over it on the front too and you don't have to do that, but it also makes the front, gives it a little more um, 
protection, I want to say, or if I were using other um, media, like different things that are, um, <clears throat> it's just a layer. It makes the surface non-porous is what it does. And uh, sometimes you want that. I don't know that I need it, need it, but it also will just adhere the paper to the tag much um, better too. And then I'm just going to put my brush in water and I have to let these dry too. Um, so, uh, I think I wanted to talk about, um, what should we talk about? I don't want to talk about cancer because cancer, I've lost my mom and my aunt to cancer. My grandma, my, my paternal mom, my, my dad's mom died of breast cancer. Um, so there's a lot of cancer in my family and it's not, it's not, good because I just where I wonder when I'm gonna get it is really what you do so um, it is important to get your mammograms which I didn't get this year either um, got a got a prescription for it I'm 51 um, my mom had ovarian she got it when she was 68 uh, Elna, I don't remember when she was first diagnosed with breast, and she was probably in her 60s, no, <clears throat> she was probably earlier than that, maybe in her 50s, <clears throat> went away, it recurred as bone cancer, and she passed away this year, um, so, yeah, not fun, but, you know what, let's just talk pink, now see, this is, it doesn't seem to be adhered here very well, but let's dry it off a little. And then I'm just going to cut this paper around the edges. So I'm going to go off camera and I'll do that and I'll be right back. So I don't know if I would have adhered this paper to the tag first if it would be the same or any of that stuff. I just like, I saw this technique and um, had to try it. It just seemed like such a cool way to get color onto a page or a background. But there's tons of other things you could do. Um, I was thinking about using my sprays, my Diane Reevely ink sprays, which are so vibrant. And I just did a, um, kind of a, a think pink themed uh, piece for my um, my journal soup class that I took so uh, there's a lot you could do but I just felt like I've been playing with clay uh, this week and so I just felt like playing with paint today so that's now that isn't completely adhered so I'll go and um, I'll stick that down but look how pretty like that's a pretty background and the manila is showing through a little bit I'll have to punch another hole but and this one is even a little more see-through and it's funny because I see there's like these black lines I guess something must have been on my um, card I had old paint on my card on the credit card that I used and it kind of reenact reenacted or something or that's my guess anyway um, but uh, a background is fun. And you know what? I did learn a lot from um, when I first started with mixed media. It was very confusing to me. I didn't understand. I watched a lot of videos and they were just going to town and doing so many layers and different things. And I have a, a, a painting background, a decorative painting, which is, um, uh, anyway, it's a very... Um, there's a, it's process oriented, I like to say, and so I needed a process. I needed to know step one, do this. Step two, do that. You know, it made me feel more comfortable because my um, thing with crafting is I'm not going to do it if it's not fun. But because I was new to it, I had to keep trying, get through a few things, and figure it out, and I figured it out. One of the main things, too, that um, I learned in my or my journal soup, that's the thing. Take as many classes or watch as many videos as you can because uh, you'll learn something different from everyone. Everyone has their take on it, 
and they do it for different reasons and it, it, it all it could all help you understand or make sense of it um, and one of the things I figured out was tone on tone for your background is the best way to go and what I mean by that is that's why I pulled all my pink inks and stuff because if I just started putting every color under the moon on here it would become too much so um, that was a huge help so I could show one sometime some of my older pieces where I really didn't know what I was doing and um, I just love color so of course I went for all my new stuff my color and my inks and my paint and I was just going to town and it just looked like a mishmash of a bunch of different it wasn't good so that's just a tip and again do what you love though don't you know don't worry about any rules really but in general that's just a rule of thumb um, that uh, tone on tone is like a good uh, jumping off point if you want to you know so I'm going to do some stamping I want to I definitely want to do my hearts in red I'm going to do so, these words um, I think I'm going to pick this stays on fuchsia pink for this one I think that's going to be the perfect compliment I got to dry it a little bit more <laughs> <coughs> put a um, eyelet in the uh, hole there I have a I have some pink eyelets I think I have my hole punch but Maya could have it oh no here it is this isn't probably big enough this is a little hole punch I'll use my crocodile yeah this is way too small but it just tore it tore a new one all right Anyway, we're going to do, I'm going to ink up this stamp and see what happens with this fuchsia. This is fuchsia pink. And I'm just, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is a background, so I'm just getting some uh, ink on there. I love the smell of stays on. I don't know why, but I just do. It ha it's a solvent ink. Mm, I don't know why, <laughs> but I like it. And this is showing up really pretty dark. So that's okay. Um, it's a background. I'm going to set that aside and we'll try it on this darker one too because um, I'm just, that's what I'm going with. But I don't think that light pink is going to show up anymore. I don't know. That's all right. Let's just go with it. Go with it. Go with it. Keep it moving, Sarah. It does not have to be perfect, guys. This is, like I said, a background. I'm going to have so much stuff on here. Like, um, I'm putting an angel. That looks pretty. It might be too much. I don't know. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, uh, uh, this isn't what I do normally. I mean, it is. I've done it a lot, but, you know, we're winging it. All right, so I love the smell of stays on. I don't know why, but I do. Um, I think I want to, you can always tone it down, too, if you feel like you need to. I could add um, a little bit of uh, white paint to this now, and I might just do that because... Um, Sorry, I can't punch a hole evidently and talk at the same time. Um, but it's looking pretty good. It's looking very pink and very uh, happy. That's all I want. Happy pink. That's what today is all about. Um, but I think I'm going to do a technique that I learned in my, uh, oops, my um, journal soup class. And I'm going to use this white paint. I'm just going to put it on my craft mat right now. And I'm going to take this card 
and I'm going to use the edge of the card and load up my card so I have paint on my card and then you just take it and kind of pull some over the tag I like this technique a lot because it looks painterly it doesn't look like I am trying to do anything particular but it just adds a little bit of color I'm going to do it to this one too even though this one's much lighter in color I could be using black right now or um, that dark fuchsia color but I just wanted to add oops I'm pulling off the paper so we'll fix that at the end alright so that's a technique you do I am going to <clears throat> I guess I have to let that dry, but you know what? Let's do a few caps while we're at it. I love using any type of cap to make some circles. Kate, Kate Crane, the woman I took the class from, she loves circles in her work. Circles just feel good to her, so she works with circles a lot. A lot of her um, carved stamps that she's used are circles and she just loves circles and so that's what she does now I have this pen cap can you hopefully I'm in the shot yeah I'm liking my overhead camera shot now um, it took a little bit of getting used to because I stuck my head in it a few times and my lighting seems a little um, bright or something something's going on with that but uh, I think I'm liking it all right, so that's good. It's looking very happy. Um, let me get a paper towel. All right, so that's something I could do. Now I want to come in, and I could always do um, black. I definitely want to add black. I'm going to ink the edges. I don't think this is going to show up. I think the red, I definitely should do some red hearts. But in the meantime, I think we're going to just let that sit and let it dry for a minute. And we're going to go over here to, I have a piece of um, watercolor paper. And I'm going to draw a couple of angels on here. And this is a very simple, um, whimsical design that Kate Crane taught in her class. And I know I'm shout giving her lots of shout outs today. Um, I'm just going to use a, I think I'm going to use a pen. I'm just going to go right in with one of my, um, <clears throat> let's do, you know what I'm going to use, um, sorry, my, uh, I just got some new, um, Faber-Castell pit pens and these are, extra small and small so I'm going to use the small and I'm going to put my tag over here so I can get the right size because I want to make an angel and I'm going to she would do it in. you could do it in pencil first and then um, go over it with pen but I'm just going to go right in with pencil I mean with pen and the idea is to kind of make um, a whimsical character and I'm gonna paint it too so her head is kinda tipped to the side and I'm gonna go down to here and across I'm gonna give her a little I wanna give her like hair cuz Kate didn't give her hair and I kinda think I wanna give her a bun but she gets a halo I think I wanna give her like two pigtails I'm just going to do pigtails like on the side like this. They probably don't look like pigtails, do they? Because her wings are supposed to be hearts. And I might have just... Look, I'm just winging this, you guys. Literally. Um, and then... she had. You could do like a cute collar. And little something along the bottom. I like to give her eyes and that's basically it. And then on her, we could journal, Kate journaled on her um, 
close. But see, I think that's going to fit on here pretty good. It might be a little, I might set it off center. Um, and I'm going to paint this. Let's paint it. Um, let's see. All right, I'm going to paint it with my light, I wish I had my light flesh, flesh tone. Here it is. Um, <clears throat> I could speed this up and, you know, make it a lot faster. Um, a lot of times uh, people tell me they like to see what I'm doing, though, so that's why I'm kind of... Uh, letting it be real time and Kate would just um, not have hair on here and it was a very whimsical piece I can actually paint this once it's on there too instead of painting it first that's an idea oh don't forget her neck and I mean you could give her arms she could have little arms coming around but I think to keep it as whimsical as possible she doesn't need arms that's the idea and I'm just going to do one coat. Like, I'm not even going to, um, I like burnt sienna. Do I have it out here? Excuse my arm. I have burnt umber. I could mix it with, um, see, I have, oh, there's burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is like a reddish brown, and I love reddish brown. It's kind of like my hair color. People were telling me I should change my hair. I got a haircut. It's all the way up. Again, I get, I'm always getting my hair cut or letting it grow. That's what my husband says. Ever since he's known me, it's either been getting it cut or letting it grow. And uh, it's just hair. It grows back. But I'm loving it short. In the summer, it's hard because um, it's too hot. I live in South Jersey, and it gets really, really hot. And the humidity, it's just like a big frizzy ball, frizz ball. So I just have it in a ponytail like all the time, but um, it's cool out. It's finally cool. I did not need all that paint. I'm just going to take it and I'm going to scoop it up and put it back in here. Why not? Cat Hand would put it on a piece of paper. She doesn't waste paint. She puts it on something. Um, so I actually need two of these angels if I'm going to do two tags. Uh, I want to do like frosty pink wings, like a really light, oh, you know what, no, I'm just going to do, I'll do white. I have this white Martha Stewart pearl, mother of pearl, and um, it's really one of, become one of my favorite paints. Um, all of these pearl metallic paints have have really I just want to use them on everything uh, I love shimmer and shine and why wouldn't you have that instead of a, a matte finish I don't know um, yeah so I use these all the time and I'm being really sloppy about this guys I am not really um, being perfect at all. Uh, I'm trying to, because I'm kind of rushing. I think if I were doing this on my own time and just taking my time, it would be uh, a little more neat, you know. But uh, for what I'm doing today, I want you guys to realize no matter what your skill level is, if you are having fun and it's taking your mind off of things that's why I named my channel my serenity crafts because honestly it is when I'm doing this I don't think about anything else well that's a lie I, I mean you do but you're happy anyway <laughs> I am I it is my serenity it really really is um, so I'm gonna get the brighter pink and put that on her um, little and I'm just putting this right on my mat for the mat. These mats are so awesome uh, for all types of mediums. And supposedly you can't burn it with your heat gun. Like that's another big selling point. Uh, it's pretty cool. All right, she's good enough. And then I'm going to doodle and do all types of stuff to her. 
but this paint should be dry by now so I'm gonna let that all right let's just move this wait let me cut Um, <clears throat> gonna wipe up. It's a lot of paint I'm wasting, cat hand. Don't watch. Don't look. Let me see what's under here. I feel something under here. Oh, it's a tile. Polymer clay tile. All right. So, um, real quick, and you can see through uh, this paint. So it's a very sheer coat of color. But you know what? I think that's what I'm just going for today. I am just really trying to um, tell you guys that whatever um, mediums you have, uh, it could be crayons, pencils. Um, that was another thing uh, Kate Crane did. We used colored pencils to color. She's definitely... She loves to sketch and draw and um, got, I, ha I have them and I never use them or, or play with them that way. Like I said, I'm a painter. I go to the paints a lot. Uh, so it was fun. It was fun to play with all the mediums that I have. But yeah, use what you have and have fun. Don't, uh, it's not, don't try to make it like mine. Make it like yours. Um, decorative painting is a type of painting that another artist creates the design and I use that line drawing to to do the piece so what I'm saying is it's not my work it's someone else's work and that's why making your own stamps um, and drawing your own images to put on your piece it just becomes more your piece and I'm enjoying that now I think I needed decorative painting in the beginning because I wasn't brave enough maybe or I just like the idea of not having to think about what I was doing because someone else had already thought it through and designed the piece and picked the colors everything um, and I painted for about I want to say like 15 years that's all I did and then I discovered YouTube and YouTube is a wonderful, wonderful place. There's so many things though now. Um, Pinterest and Instagram, which I don't do Instagram, but you can just post pictures. I know um, a lot of uh, list makers and planner girls and stuff do that on Instagram. And um, so it's a new age of crafting now. And I wanted to move along with the times and see what was going on and try new things. I love to try new things. That's probably my main uh, thing. I, I jump around from craft to craft so much. Um, so here she is. She's not perfect. Let's see if she fits on the tag. She fits. I think I like her on this one, on the dark one. Um, I'm going to glue her down with my regular glue. But first, I want to do a couple more things to the background. I'm going to do my hearts in red. <clears throat> I love, mm, I love the smell of stays on. Stays on is an ink brand. Solvent ink, yeah. So I want to do a couple of hearts. And you're not going to be able to see them. They're just... I know they're there. Yep, I do. I'm going to put them on this one. And do I want to do anything else? Um... I think I want to ink the back, the edges too. Uh, I want to put this on there, but I think I'm going to do it. I'm 
I'm going to do it by itself. So I'm going to do, this is interesting. You know what I like to do when I'm working with um, these carved stamps? I just take my ATG gun. This is um, an advanced tape glider. It has like double stick adhesive on it. And I put a little bit on my um, stamping block. And then I just put my image on there. Because that way you have more control. It's probably going to, I don't know, stick all over. It has stuck to the back of my stamps, but I do it when I'm doing mixed media. I'm going to use the pink. Got to use the, I could probably try it. I'm going to try it in this light pink and see how light it is. And if it's too light, it's very light, but I kind of like it. I'm going to do a couple of them. And I'll do a couple of, um, because I think I might cut it out. I like that color, though. The color is super pretty. It's by Wendy Vecchi. It's called Pink Peony. And I'm going to do it in the darker color pink. Because I think the actual pink awareness ribbon is that color. That's the color pink for breast cancer. Like, see, yeah, this is very fuchsia. Like, very. This is, um, yeah, fuchsia pink. So I think I'm going to use this one. Um, but I did a good job on that, carving that stamp, didn't I? And I, I think that's, like, one of the first ones I ever did. It's not hard at all. So I will definitely be back... Um, to share um, the, the book I got. Julie Fay Fenn Bowser, her name is, something like that. And um, she's amazing. She is a, she designs stencils and like all types of stuff. She's a spokesperson for the um, big, bro a big, for the brother, big brother, for the brother um, cutting thing. That's like uh, the cricket. She's, she's just very talented. Um, yeah. Thank you, Julie, for being there for us crafters. So yeah, so I think I'm going to cut these out. Where's my big scissors? I like this light color. So this could be a little tricky to cut out. I'm going to, I might use my, um, exacto knife to get the, uh, inside of it, but I know how to do it with a regular I like my cuddle bug, my cuddle bug, cutter bee scissors. They're very pointy little sharp scissors. And um, I'm able to get into nooks and crannies with them pretty well. So I use them. Like, see, look, here they are. Why am I using those big ones? This is just, and then I just like to make a hole. I'm going to stab my finger. And then I just start cutting until you get to the edge. And you can just cut that right out. But a lot of people like to use their X-Acto blades. I just find this just as easy, or easier actually. That's why I don't use the X-Acto. And um, voila. These are awesome little scissors. I like these scissors. They're very sharp and, okay. So yeah, so I think that's, oh yeah, that's going to be perfect. So we got our little angel and our little thing. And I was thinking I, I want to put cure. I want to put cure on here. Um, so I have that. I have that. Do I want to put her off center and then this down? I kind of think I do. Um... I think I'm going to glue her on there. Um, I really want to use glue. I don't want to use my matte medium. People love matte medium, but I don't think it's a strong adhesive. Um, so you know what? I'm going to use my Scotch Quick Dry, and I'm going to glue her down. And then I'm going to go over it with um, matte medium. I like to use, these are the little Cutter Bee, um, Cutter Bee, is that what they're called? Tweezer Bee. Tweezer Bees. I'm going to put this on here. 
a little off center. I kind of like that. And I'm going to use, uh, where's my paper towel? Oh, I threw it out because I cleaned up all that uh, ink paint. And just push down. But that glue, this glue is the Qu Scotch Quick Dry. It's my favorite paper glue. I use it for any time I'm gluing paper to paper. Other than that, I love Fabri-Tac. And this is fabric lace, glass leather, wood trims. It's a little bit sticky. It's a tacky glue. It has strings, but it holds so well and right away. But this is the Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. It's, um, like I said, my favorite paper to paper glue. All right, so this is looking good. I think I'm gonna glue this down up here. I kind of want to um, ink it, but you know what? I think I'm going to paint around it. I'm going to paint around all this stuff and pop it out like I do. I'll show you. Those of you who have seen my um, art journal, you know what I'm talking about. All right, my dust is getting a little full of stuff. I'm just going to throw stuff back in the drawers here. I'm going to put my paints. Okay, so... We're gonna, I'm gonna glue this down too. And then I'm gonna go over it with a coat of uh, matte medium. And then I'm gonna dry it. So while I'm drying, I'll go away and be back and show you. So I'm gonna put that up there. I like that she's kind of looking up at it. Cute. And we're going to make that pop. Don't worry. It's going to pop. I'm going to cut off this little... Alright. It's looking cute. Alright, let me put a little matte medium on top of it. Um, just like I said, because now whatever I do to the piece, it's got a seal. The background has been sealed. I'm not going to screw up or smudge anything that's on there already. So um, it's just a good way to go. A lot of times layers are, are good, and mixed media especially, um, to use when you're using lots of different. So I could be using a water-based ink on here if I only had that. And when you seal a water-based ink, if I were to go like this with my matte medium, I could smudge it. So there's other ways to seal water-based inks. So just... Do a little research, that's all, before you, or it's trial and error, and don't be afraid to mess up, that's all. Just, you know, try things and see what, what works. That is looking so cute already, but I'm going to make it pop. All right, so i got to let that dry. Um, I'm going to go away, I'm going to go get, I think I want to get um, some pink ribbon to put in the top of it. I'm going to think about how I want to finish it off with what kind of embellishments and we'll be back to finish. All right, I found these eyelets and I'm going to use my Cropodile. This is by We Are Memory Keepers and it like, it, it sets eyelets for you and it was one of my first toys that I got when I first started paper crafting. And all you do is, hopefully, you know what, I think it's set to my smaller... Yeah, I gotta change it. Hopefully, oh lord. I don't remember. Oh, I think I'm gonna just make it look bigger. Because this is the bigger eyelet. First, you just. There you go. Voila. So that just covers up my hole. I got these probably from Joann's. I have a I have a bunch of um eyelets. Um, I think they do sell them at Joann's, but my Joann's is more of like a, um, it doesn't have a lot of paper crafting stuff anymore. They have a lot of beads. They definitely have a lot of beads. So anyway, I just did that. I inked the edges of this with my Distress Ink in the um, barn door, but I didn't, I don't want to do that yet. I think I'm going to end up doing all my shading with paint. So I just, um, but see like I have small eyelets. And I have these bigger ones. I used to, I use these on my um, what are they called? Mini albums and stuff. And then Joann's had them. I have teal. I have pink. 
I have like cream. So I, I just wanted to use them. They're in my stash. I got to use them. Um, let's see. So this is now on here, right? I'm loving it. I think it's turning out really, really cute. So the next thing I'm going to do, and this is my style of painting, is do some shading and highlighting. Look how I like, on this one I did her dress darker pink, and this one I did it lighter pink to kind of hopefully pop out. I think they're turning out cute. This one's a little shorter. See, I because it's hand drawn, it'll never be identical. Um, her, I gave her like little buns on the side of her head, and this one has triangles. I don't know why. Um, so yeah, so there's differences. And then I can put little polka dots on their dress or whatever, but first I'm gonna just, let me get some paints here. I have, um, these are all metallic-y, so I think I want some opaque paints because this is a pearl and everything on here is pearl, except for that's ink. Um, so I'm just gonna use to shade with, First of all, let's do her little face. So I need to use a like shading color for her little face. I'm just gonna use this medium flush. Let's see. Maybe I should use this one. I'm gonna use this. Even though it's darker, I'm gonna go really lightly. And I use a technique called floating. When I took the class with um, Kate Crane, she does wet on wet painting, which is more of um, an oil painting style or um, heavy body acrylic style, but I learned this way, so that's what I'm kind of, and I'm happy to like fall back on it. Like at now that I'm like getting back into my painting, I'm really enjoying using these techniques again. So I use an angle brush and water to get my paint to move. So I do use water. Kate didn't use water. And then I blend the color on my, I would usually use a paper palette. Um, and this is not a painting tutorial, so I'm not going to get into it too much with you guys. But I will be doing this around the whole piece to add some shading and highlighting. And um, if you want to learn more about that, I have lots of other painting videos. So just go scroll through my videos and um, look for uh, painting tutorials and stuff. And you'll see what I'm talking about. So um, I'm actually going to pull my, I have a, what, a paper palette. This is a paper palette. It's just kind of like waxy paper, pa palette paper. It's a smooth poly coated surface, but for this technique to get the paint to, to blend through the um, bristles, it's nice to have, but I can do it on my um, palette, on my, I'm sorry, whatever that thing is called, craft mat. <laughs> So I'm just getting a little bit more of the, um, the hair color and I'm just using that to darken around the edges a little bit and just give it a little kind of highlight and shade. Just nothing major, nothing. This is a very cutesy, whimsical piece and I don't want it to look, you know, perfect. I just want it to look um, a little more dimensional. So I'm gonna get my, uh, I'm going to use Royal Fuchsia, I think. That should just do it. I'm not going to, um, I'm going to try not to use a lot because I tend to be a heavy hand. So that's a little bit of paint. Hopefully I'll walk away from it and I won't put too much. And hopefully this will work on this, um, it's working, on top of this pearl paint because it has a slick surface. It actually works really nicely. So I'll zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going for a little shading. Maybe I'll put a little down the side and along the bottom. But I'm not trying to be perfect at all. I'm just adding a little. See, and that, I don't know. I'm not used to working on top of this pearl paint. This is a mop brush. And it's really just used to mop up the water if I leave water on the surface and it kind of smooths out your float. And again, if you, if this is all Greek to you, just check out, um, if you want to learn how to do it, check out my painting tutorials. I have painting tutorials. It's an excellent technique, but it is hard. It's not easy. Like you're not going to get it the first time. So um, it can be frustrating. I've taken so many classes over the years, you guys, like before um, YouTube, 
I was taking classes. I was going to convention. I was taking seminars. I belong to a, a local chapter. And, you know, it's years of practice. So don't feel like, you know, you should be able to do this right away. I'm going to try and put a little pink on her cheeks. And I'm going to use the pearl paint and see if I can... Eh, I don't like that. We'll do that. I'm going to do it with the um, bubblegum pink. This is a regular acrylic. It's a, a matte, matte finish. It's not a... Um, and I always have a Q-tip. So I can just take that off if I need to. Um, I could actually highlight the bottom of her face. She's looking a little dark down there. Highlight it a little bit. What should I put on her wings? So around everything, I was thinking of using my um, Payne's Gray. I love the look of this, and if I'm gentle enough with it, I think it's going to be good. But, because it's, like it's like a purpley, let's see, what color is that? It's like a purpley blue, but it's great for um, shading. So this is what I mean. I'm going to put it up against her, and it'll bring her to the forefront of the piece now. And she really should be standing on something. I forgot about that. I could have stamped a little something on the bottom. I could, I could use um, washi tape or something. I should have put a piece of washi tape underneath for her to stand on. So how's that look? See how it just makes her pop? And I mean, probably a like a cherry, mm, black cherry. I'm going to use black cherry on this one. I'm going to go get my, it's like a, is it black cherry or a uh, mendicino? This might be good. And the other thing about uh, decorative painting is these, these bottles, we're called bottle babies because, um, heavy body acrylic or oil painters can mix any color they want to. I never took a color wheel class or any of that stuff. I just have always used paint right from the bottle. So let's see what this, this is going to be good. I think I'm going to use this. So, um, if you've ever wondered why there's so many colors of paint, it's because you can create a piece without mixing color and that's what I've done or I have tons of paint in my stash so that's why even though all these new products are coming out in mixed media I am glad and happy to be going back to I'm just pulling all my old paints out and using all these techniques that I've had in my toolbox that's what I call it in your creative toolbox so um, I'm adding lots of new things too as well. I mean, uh, mixed media is just that. You're just using a lot of different media. You're using pencils and crayons and oils and water-based and solvent inks and, you know, and it's all playing together. And so it's bringing all of these uh, crafty communities together now. Um, I love it. So... If you, the other thing I have is the, um, these guys, where are they? The Faber-Castell Pit Pens. These are India ink. And now that I've used my gel medium on here, all you have to do, I could probably take this pink and go around. I'm going to just do it on this one just to show you. I've already gone on that with the, you just put it there. And I could shade around everything just by a smudge of my finger. And I love doing this too. Like this is super easy. And it gives you the same effect. You're going to be able to bring the, the fo for focal image to the forefront. Say that five times fast. Um, but that's it. Like it's just maybe this color is a little light on this piece. But you could also do it on her, like under here, if that wasn't dark enough. 
and it's just another option. Um, this might not be dark enough. And I know a lot of um, art journal people are using their pit pens to do that. Um, but like I said, I just end up doing um, painting again. So because that's what I have, that's what I've done forever. And again, if you want to see how to do this, I have um, tutorials. I have a tour of my home where I show you all the things that I've painted over the years. Uh, so there's, anywho. This is fun though. This is actually very relaxing for me, but some people would find it frustrating because it's, it's a kind of technique that it takes practice. And so you just have to do it. You have to keep at it and you'll get there. And it is um, very um, effective. So that's what I was thinking of doing. You know what? I'm going to use the... Um, around the edges I'm going to do the uh, Payne's Gray. So that's this one. I'm just going to go around the bottom. And this is what most people would use their distress, um, distress stains or distress inks, I'm sorry. The Tim Holtz distress inks and just go around the edge of the piece but I just do it this way with paint and it kind of finishes it off. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of with my, um, my Faber-Castell pit pen in the small. I'm going to do some outlining and stuff and I think I'm going to be done. But like you could spatter this. You could do a million things. You could put polka dots. I think I might put some polka dots or stripes on her dress. Um, let me keep going. Let's think. What am I doing here? Did I go around everything? Did I sh shade and highlight? Um, I think I would like to bring up some of the shading on her. Um, let me shade her wings. Should I use the Payne's Gray? Yeah, I'm talking to myself, guys, but you happen to be there. <laughs> uh, That looks good. Um, I think I'm going to use the black cherry around the... I might have already done it. Nope, I didn't. This is the one that I did the uh, pit pen around, so that's why it's very light. But yeah, you have to use a darker color and you'll get that all of a sudden that focal image. It's a little light, but when I outline it, it'll be good. I'm gonna go on the dress a little bit. And I mean, like I said, this could be so detailed with tons of shading, lots of layers of shading. But I really just want to get it um, cute, not just not um, one-dimensional. I just wanted to bring a little extra dimension to it, and I think I've done that. So I'm just mopping the more the water edge. Um, is that all I want to do? Her face seems so dark. I kind of want to brighten that up, but I think I'm going to be done. Let me just go over the uh, ribbon with a little bit of pearly paint to shine it up. Just on this edge. Maybe on this uh, bottom part. And right here. All right. I gotta go in with my pen now and do some doodling. I'm gonna dry it.
think I want to do a couple of, I'm going to do some stenciling. I'm going to put a couple on her dress. These are kind of big, but I still think I'm going to do it. I'm going to use paint and I'm going to do, should I do a pink or should I go like gold or something? I think gold would look really, really pretty. I think I'm going to do gold. And it won't be, um, see white would look really good. I think I'm going to go white because I've lost some of the white got um, pushed back. So I'm just going to use this in a little piece of um, like cut and dry foam I have in here somewhere. Hold on, this. It's hard as a rock. Here we go. Um, this is just cut and dry foam. You can get that at Michael's. And I'm going to use um, a stencil and I'm just going to go randomly here and there. on the background and on her. Oh, I'm already out of paint. But I don't want it to be uh, really dark, so. Cute! I like it. Alright. So, I did that. And then I'm going to do some um, outlining. I was going to do some daisies. I have this daisy stencil that I love because i it's just happy to me. Use what makes you happy, you know? Um, that would have been super pretty, but I just think I want, I wish they were smaller. Just because it's a tag, I think it should have been, um, but I would have liked them to be a little more petite. So I could also do stamping, one more layer of stamping. Do I really want to? I always like to add black, but I don't really have anything that's um, petite. I have, I love using this script stamp. I could use that circle stamp. I didn't use that. Sorry for my reach. Um, this one, this is the script stamp I always use. But see, you can overdo it. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do some outlining and then we'll uh, see what happens. So let's outline a few things. This has to go. This pen is not really as dark as I like. I like a really dark black line. And I have the food ball. Uh, I'll show you it. But it's a thicker line, and I don't want it to be that thick. So I've been kind of opting for this one. This is the um, F-U-D-E ball. It's a 1.5. It's a, it's a much darker, uh, and it smudges too, so I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm just going to stick with this. Let's just, and I'm, I might, I'm trying not to stick my head in here, but I would like to get over the piece a little more. And the idea that Kate said, it's to make it sketchy. Like, don't try to make it all one line. Try, like, it's okay if you go over like that. Give her her eyes again. Maybe a little smile, too. That doesn't look like a very good smile. But making it sketchy is okay. It, it Again, it adds character and she actually said to double, double line everything. And actually, if you don't like it like that, don't do that. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is all um, one teacher's opinion. And I happen to, I just took what I liked from her class and now I'm applying that to my pieces. And that's what everyone should do. So if there are certain things in here that you don't like, obviously don't do them if they don't make you happy. 
Um, I think I want to go... I could show you the difference with the food ball, but it's smudgy. I hope I don't smudge. But I'm just going to go around the edge like this and make a frame. It's much darker and slicker. Like, can you see how dark it is? It's beautiful, but it is smudgy, and so you have to be a little careful with it. Um, I think it's adorable. I have some, uh, I just pulled, this is like a creamy color. Um, what's this stuff called? Seam binding, right? So let me cut a little piece off. I could go around a few of those. Um, you can't get this through the hole. A few of those um, polka dots that I made because that would look cute. The seam binding's getting caught on the uh, back of the um, eyelet. So there's that. Can tell I've had coffee today. I'm all shaky. All right, and then I kind of do want to go around a couple of these. Alright, I think I'm calling it done. I'm just going to sign my name. I think it's cute. I could have probably done a ton more to it, but it's cute. It's pink, it's happy, and I just wanted to contribute something to the hashtag event today. It's the um, Creative Arts Collaboration, and it's the hashtag uh, Creative Arts Collab. Think Pink Art. And I hope you enjoyed that. Um, to everyone out there who has some, who knows someone or who is struggling with any type of cancer, God bless you, and um, thanks for watching.